Sally Breckenridge and this video is on using colors in Weavit Pro for Windows. There's quite a few segments so I've listed below in the details of the video the location for each of the features that I will be talking about today. The first thing I want to show you is how to change the colors when you're editing. We'll pick the edit and look at the warp yarns. You see all the color choices and we'll change it. In the select mode, you select the threads that you want to change. Then you pick the color you want to change it to. Let's make it yellow. And do this one too. Let's just pick it again. Or in the mark mode, select the color you want to add. We'll pick the green. And you just click on the squares along the top. And that only changes the color. Another way to change the color is in yarn selection. The yarn selection on the project menu shows the list of your yarns. You can see that the ones that you're actually in your project uh, have a star at the beginning of them. Let's say we want to change that green. We select the green. You go down and you pick the color. Let's say we want it to be a brighter green. Pick replace. And you'll see the color here. Then pick OK and you see the color change. When you pick custom colors on the design menu, you will have an editor that you can use to create a custom palette. In the editor, you can see the palette of the current colors we're using. This is the currently displayed color. On the upper right, you see a square, and when you move the cursor around, you see the colors change. From the top is a fully saturated color, and as you go down, it's more muted and a less saturation in it. The bar to the right is the lightness, and as you move it up and down, you can see the lightness. If you look over to the next columns here, you see red, green, blue. On a screen, the colors are done by additive colors in RGB. And if I put zero in each of those places, and tab out, you see that the color is black. That represents no color. As I move the scale higher, notice how the color turns more gray. It has really no color. And you'll notice that the red, green, and blue remain equal to each other. So that's how you do it. When you get to the top, you have white with full red, full green, and full blue. That's why it's called additive colors. There's no hue, there's no saturation when it's like that. If I go over to the color bar now and I start moving the color bar around, you can see that the hue changes from red to blue to green, but nothing changed here. That's because we have full sat full whiteness, full luminosity. So we're going to put it right about the center. That's the best, most intense colors you'll get there. And then we can see the red, green, blue, red, yellow. So that's how the color editor works. 
If I pick a color here, I can adjust that color by just moving the thing around. We'll make it a darker green. I have a button that says set color. I can set the color. I can add a yarn to a project if th that yarn is not in the project. We'll talk about that when we get into the project. I can create a new palette. I can open a palette and I can save the palette. In this case, I don't want to save it because I've already saved that one, but we'll look at the open palettes quickly. Don't want to save this one. And you see a list of palettes that are in the documents, weave it files, colors. You can play around with these. We will just go back here and create a new palette and show you how to do that. The first two colors are black and white. If we just pick them, you can see that that's white, whereas black. And then you pick the third one. This doesn't change. It picks whatever your last color is. So let's say I want to create a palette of reds. I'm going to mark here. I'm going to make this the most intense red I can, which is there, and I'll set the color. Next, I'm going to go to the next square. You'll notice that this hasn't changed, so I can make a more muted color, and we'll set that color. I go to the next square, make a more muted color, set that color, even more muted down here and well we'll just go to the next one if i move this down i have a darker color let's go up here and you can see i get another color of red there's well we have to go to the next square then we have to move it you have to have an empty square here to to add and set a color if you set the color if we want to change a color we'll go back to this one you can change it to something else let's make that a light pink and you set the color you'll notice it changed that color so you can you know play around and create a color palette that you want i go here have the purple. Let's pull this down. Okay, so now we can set that color and I've added that color. When you've created all the colors that you want, pick Save Palette and move that up a little. It's too big. Let's just make it smaller so you can see it. Okay, there we are. And I can give it a name, Sally's, and save it. If I don't put an extension, it will add it. And I have this new palette. And when I pick OK, and I go to Edit, you'll see that you now have this new palette of colors that you're using. So that's how to create a custom color palette that you can use for your other tools. Next, I want to demonstrate the color and weave tool in Weave It Pro for Windows. Sometimes it's much easier to enter your draft using just a single color and then use the color and weave to select new colors for alteration because it's faster. So after you have entered your draft, and you can see the design here is just in two colors, black and white, on the design menu, pick color and weave. In the color and weave dialog, you have a choice of doing the warp on the weft. We'll do both. Select up to four colors to use. In this case, I'm going to use the blue for one yarn and this yellow for the other yarn and just do an A and B sequence. 
And that's the simplest thing there. And now you can see that you now have a nice uh, shadow weave draft using the two colors alternating. You can go in and change this. This time, let's just do the weft and we'll change the order. It's same colors, but different order. And pick OK. And you see that you get a totally different design. If we look at the structure under the View menu, pick Structure Only, you can see that it's still a plain weave design and still weavable. But you have a whole different look just by the colors you chose. Next, I want to demonstrate another use of the color tool to do uh, plaids and stripes. I've picked a simple two twill draft. I'm going to pick color and weave again. This time I'm going to pick a custom sequence and I'm going to pick let's say three colors here. We'll use the I want them to be distinct so you can see them. So we'll use the green, the yellow, and maybe the red. The numbers here on the color matches the numbers on the sequence. So to use three of those colors, I can use, I want to type A, B, and C. You don't have to capitalize it. I'm capitalizing it just because it's easier to see in the video. So I'm going to go A, 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 B, B, B. I think I'll just do two Bs, C, C, um, B, B again, and then A, A, A. Three A's, two B's. Now I'm going to say OK, and you see this new design. I'm going to turn off the repeat and you see you got the green and red and you got your design that we entered for the threading, but you didn't get it for the treadling. Go back to one repeat. We only repeated this once. So that's a thing that you have to be aware of when you use the color and weave. You need to have at least as many threads as you have in your color and weave custom sequence and it should be a multiple of the number of threads. To make the plaid look correctly, I need to copy and paste this twice. Pick colors and weave again. This time we only want to do the weft. The first color was green. The second color was yellow, and the third color was the red. It was a custom sequence, A, 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 B, B, C, C, B, B, A, A, A. Pick OK, and now you see the sequence again. When I show the repeat, now you see the plaid design. So that's one way of using color and weave to create plaids and any type of a custom design that you want to have multiple colors in. Finally, I want to demonstrate using the color sequence tool that's found on the design menu. Color sequences are best used for stripes and plaids. We'll skip the reading here and just say we're going to create a plaid. So we want the sequence to work on both the threading and the treadling. And we'll create a new one. There's two ways to create it. One is using measurement and the other is thread grouping. When you use thread grouping, 
it just takes all the colors that you enter and it puts the structure using those colors. I'm going to demonstrate use measurement. That's the best one for creating a plaid. This dialog first tells you how many threads are in your pattern. In this case, there's only four. And the reason you need that number is so that you can make the size match the number of threads. We've set the current set is at 16 ends per inch. So we can either use inches or threads so that you can make each pick one. So, but I'm gonna use threads, so I'm gonna pick threads and I like to use two at a time because then you get a line instead of a dashed line when you mark your color. So then you pick your color and I think I'll make it green. I'm in mark mode. I just mark and drag and I've made 32 threads. So that's two inches using a set of 16. Next, I am going to find the this purple and I'm going to put a stripe in the very center on each side and I'll make it a little wider I guess and finally I want to make um, maybe a bright yellow stripe where the yellow go that's it that's oh there's the bright yellow I wanted that bright yellow I'm going to make it just a little bit out just just so that it's an accent okay let's see what we have you pick OK and you immediately see the plaid. I'm going to zoom out a little so you can see it and I'll set this so you can see what your plaid would look like in your fabric. Next I'm going to pick to edit in the main view. When I pick that you'll notice that the colors go away. You don't see the colors because they're not attached to each of the threads. They're separate. It's laying the color sequence over the top of the structure. If we go back to our design color sequence and we look at this first screen, we can modify the sequence, delete it, replace it, and convert it. Well, let's first modify it. And this time I'm going to add a little black stripe and I pick one thread wide because I want it in the very center and I'm going to put it there and on there. And then I will pick OK. This time it took us back out of the edit view and now you see the plaid again with the black stripe included in the design. Again, the colors are separate from the draft. But if you want to put them in there, you go to the color sequence and the last item on this menu is convert the sequence to threading and treadling. I pick that. And now when I go to edit, you're actually editing the draft with the colors included. So this allows you to change the threading if you want because the color sequence is just laid on top or include it. That is the end of this video for using colors for Weave It Pro. I hope you enjoyed it.